Hello, everybody. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to be making this presentation in English. It should be in Spanish. I'm Brazilian. I'm ashamed of the fact that I haven't learned Spanish yet. But I can guarantee you're going to suffer far less if I do this in English than <laughs> in Spanish. So it's for your sake. I'm going to start my presentation by making two confessions. The first one is that I'm in love with buildings. I am, I have been ever since I was a little kid. I, I always knew I wanted to work with buildings and in university I had the great opportunity to come across green building and I finally found my tribe. These guys were talking about performance. I'm an architect with an engineer's mind and the green building movement gave framework to that passion. How can we build buildings that are more efficient, that use resources more wisely. That comes to my second confession. I'm a capitalist. I like money, and I think that the best way for us to move this movement forward is asking, where is the money? And so I'm going to talk a lot about money, about the business case, because that's how we're getting to zero. That's a huge part of our story. We've got to make ends meet, and the green building movement has the tools to do it. We've got to learn to speak the language of administrators, of financiers, of bankers, of CFOs in order to get this done. While well, green building is about market transformation, how do we change that? As green builders, we have the right to know and we have the responsibility to tell our customers what it is that they're buying. I think the equation is fairly simple. I, as a consumer, deserve to know. My dad and my mom have asked me, what is it that you do for a living? A bunch of times, and I explain it and they don't get it, right? One, I'm a consultant working with green building. What is it that you do? But when I explained it to them what zero is, they get it immediately. I have a self-sufficient building that generates all the energy that it needs to operate. We're bringing building performance to the layman, to the person who's not an architect, who's not an engineer. Lead is from the construction industry to the construction industry. Zero has a much broader approach. Everybody gets zero. And so I'm here to talk about two projects specifically. I'm going to start with the world's first lead zero energy certified building, which I'm proud of. It's our, it's our office in Curitiba. And I'm going to finish with the world's first LEED Zero Water Certified building, which is an office building also in Curitiba, Brazil. But in between, I want to tell you a story of how we got there, because I think there's a few lessons that can help us move faster along this market transformation curve. We're an engineering firm in southern Brazil. We're a fairly small outfit. But along the way, we decided that we wanted to be working on the most innovative, the, most, the highest achieving, highest performing buildings in the world. And one way to do that is to seek out the kind of clients that are willing to commit to these projects. The blue hatch is we used more energy than we consumed. The red hatch is we generated more energy than we used. I balance out those two and I have a net zero energy building if I generated more energy than I used. We designed our office with all those green features in mind because it is a living lab. It is a way for us to test out ideas. A few things started happening that we hadn't planned on. Did we budget for charging electric bikes when we designed our photovoltaic system? But can we complain about our guys now using it? Absolutely not. We're also aiming at net zero water. It's an existing building, so how do you retrofit plumbing? One of our engineers decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's put a sink above our toilet, and once you flush, before the water goes into the tank, I can wa wash my hand and I'm reducing water usage. That's important, and it's going to be a common theme, because the less water I use, the less water I treat. The less energy I use, the less energy I need to generate. And when we talk about our pockets, financial feasibility, that's a key concept. This is our backyard. We treat our wastewater, 100% of it, 
using a natural process, constructed wetlands. There's absolutely no chemicals involved, and we reuse gray and black water that's treated to potable standard. It comes out clear, no odor, no turbidity, just as you'd get from a, a regular tap. Univali is a university, they have seven campuses. They spend about a million highs a year changing light bulbs and fixing air conditioning units that break down. When they came to talk to us, we said, listen, let's take your one million highs and buy into photovoltaic panels. And the school administrator rightly said, are you crazy? Are my kids gonna study in the dark? So no, let's go and apply for a grant for another million highs to change light bulbs and fix the air conditioning. And this is a competition, and we got first place, first year, first place, second year, first place, third year. Univali is retrofitting all its campus buildings. It's become the first university campus in Brazil to be zero, zero energy. And why is it doing all the other ones? Because the financing is there, because it makes financial sense. And finally, I want to show you the world's first lead zero water building. It wasn't designed as such. Let's turn the roof into a water storage tank. If you're going to have to pay for it in the basement, might as well pay to put it in the roof. And we'll turn it into a green roof. Well, if we're going to turn a green roof that captures and stores water, it's a natural system for one reason. It's cheap. And most importantly, it was paid by two garage spots. It's a commercial office building. 1,200 people work there every day. 91% of the water is alternative water. 65% is black water that's reused. 100% of the waste is recycled and it goes back for toilet flushing. So whatever comes out of the toilet is treated and it goes back into toilet flushing. Two thirds of the water used in this building is toilet flushing. Um, we used worms, it's a warm composter. Let worms do what worms do naturally. Then it's pumped to the roof where the plants do the intermediary treatment and then it's filtered, disinfected, and reused, the water comes out the other end clear. And I ask myself, you know, what, does, what do I have to teach them, right? I mean, these guys come into the world and you, you, know, you want the best for them. But more importantly, you ask, what are the values you want to transmit to them, right? And for me, zero has a pretty important lesson, or rather, they have a really important lesson for me, which is, you know, take only what you need and be sure to put it back. Isn't that what we want to teach our kids? Isn't that part of the moral value system that we want to share with them? Don't throw paper on the floor. Don't throw garbage in the street. Make sure to take only what you need and be sure to put it back. Thank you very much.